My name's Dale, and welcome to Metal Tips and Tricks. This is DIY Spindle Square Part B. Actually, we're going to call it Part 2. I was going to try to call these A, B, and C. wasn't working for me. So this is Part 2. In the first part, I showed you how to build the spindle square. Very easy project. Um, for the novice, it take about two hours. For the pro, about, about one hour. So uh, well worth doing and taking the time. Now in the continuation of build it, use it, my first episode for this, we built it. The second one, I'm going to show you how to use it. The third episode, well, we're going to pimp it out and make it look cool. And the fourth episode, I know I decided to add a fourth episode, is we're going to build a protective box for it to take care of this. We don't want to just, after all this work, throw it in a drawer. That would be bad. Let's get started. It's really easy to set one of these up. First thing you need to do is just do a general squaring up of the spindle. And the reason I want you to do that is it's easier to calibrate this gauge if you do it that way. Let me bring this in. And the reason it's easier, if the head is off and you're spinning this around, you're going to see if this needle is moving more than a few thousandths, it's going to be harder to calibrate. And I want to prevent that. We want to make this easy. So what I also want to do is I'm going to put an X right here. And I know my probe needs to be resting on that X every time. I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to turn its back to you. Sorry, I know that's kind of rude. And I'm going to zero this out. And I'm just going to lift the knee, get it to zero. This is not going to be a full tutorial in how to tram in the head on your milling machine. The goal of this is just to give you some rough ideas of how to use this gauge that you just built. Now I've got this set up to zero. I'm going to swing it around. And I'm going to set this one on the X. The genesis of this project is kind of interesting is when I was first designing this, I was concerned that it would be very difficult to calibrate both of these gauges. And I came up with different screw systems to raise and lower one of the gauges to help calibrate it. And they became kind of complicated on how to lock it down. So I decided, well, why don't I just build one and see if it is complicated to calibrate this? Well, what I did is find out that it isn't hard to calibrate. Now what we want to do is set this one also to zero. Now we can tell our gauge is off from one side to the other because of where that is. But since we're lining this up exactly on the X, we're going to lower this down and we're going to line it up to zero. There we go. Now the gauge is calibrated. Very simple to line this up. Like I said, we're not doing a full tutorial on how to tram in the head, but I do want to touch on a couple things. So the head can move basically in three directions. It can move in and out, which we're not concerned with, and you can tilt it from left to right, which is yaw, or you can go front to back, which is not called nodding. These three bolts are what locks the head in for the nod position. I like to loosen them first, then come back and just slightly snug them up a bit. When the bridge port was originally designed, they also encrypted or designed into this a worm screw so you can just turn a bolt and move this in and out. Or move it or knot it back and forth. I got to get my terminology correct. Let's look at the mechanics of how this is set up and why it is so critical to understand how the spindle square works and why a spindle square is so great to use. If we look right here is the pivot point that this whole head nods on. And if we were to measure from this point to the bottom of this gauge, it's shorter than from here to here. And what that means is 
when we're raising and lowering this, this needle is going to move much quicker than this one. And that's why it is so difficult to use the old method of just one gauge sitting out here and you spin it and check it because you can't say, well, this, is, this side here is two thousandths higher than this side, so I only need to move it a thousandths. It doesn't work that way because of the distance between the pivot point and your final destination. Let's crank this up. Now, I want to talk to you about the, why it is so critical to check to see if this is squared in. And it goes back to what I was just talking about. This distance here will move quite a bit faster. So I can actually line this up and still be out of square. Let me show you. Our goal here is not to line up to zero. Our goal is to get both needles to be matching in an exact same number. But as you can see, we come in here at the square, and there's quite a gap there. And that is why it's so critical when setting this up that we set up on X to try to get this in alignment as much as possible. Now, you may have to check your spindle square after this is all done and make sure that it is calibrated correctly because of errors that are involved here. Now let's crank it back up to the correct angle. See, look at how the needles move at different rates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it back all the way until this one stops rotating. It's off the ground. And now we're going to take it back the other way. Here we go. We're going to line it up. Going to keep going. Getting closer. Fairly close. Did I overshoot it? So there we go. Pretty close, not dead on. Um, if I wasn't doing the video, I'd actually detail it out. Also, one thing you're going to watch is, see where the gauges are? Look what happens when I tighten up. Well, they actually held pretty close. They're within a couple tenths of each other. That's really great for a head. So this is, again, this was just a quick tutorial on how to set up the gauge and use it I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, remember, we got two more coming up. We've got episode three, which is going to be pimping this out and making it look cool, and episode four, which is going to be talking about building a box and building an actual box to store it in. And at the end of the fourth one, we're going to start off a giveaway. And I'm going to give you an, an email address on that fourth one where we're going to have a drawing. You're going to have to email in. You're going to have to give me your name, your address, so if you win, I can send it to you. Trust me, I'm not going to use that information for anything because, well, I'm not smart enough to use it for anything. So once the drawing is over, I erase all the emails. Until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool like Spindle Square. Thanks. <laughs>